Let's start with the zombies. Zombies is what happens to science majors when they're at a Halloween party and they're standing a little bit too close to the punch bowl. They start spouting scientism. Now, science is the belief that the natural sciences give you a true account of the natural world. Scientism is the belief that the sciences give you the only possible true account of the natural world. Now, under the spell of scientism, it's easy to think you can turn a human being into a zombie because the sciences explain the natural world without appealing to anything supernatural or spiritual or spooky like a soul or even a mind. And since the hu human beings exist in the natural world, the thought is you can also explain human beings without any appeal to a soul or a spirit or a mind. And zombies just are human beings drained of all mental stuff. <laughs> so, cheat sheet. Right. For scientism, humans are already zombies. We essentially operate like robots, albeit we're a little bit wetter and smelly. So much for zombies. What about ghosts? So ghosts are what happen when you're at a Halloween party and standing up bit too close to the punch bowl are the humanities and fine arts majors. Their conversation becomes ethereal, as if they live in another world than the rest of us. So, um, now the humanities is the belief that there is a distinctive human spirit that cannot be reduced to our physical and physiological functions of our natural bodies. Now, from the humanities, you're one sip of punch away from an eerie supernaturalism if you think that because the human spirit is irreducible to the physical body, that the human mind can exist independently of the physical and material world. So just as for scientism, humans are already zombies, for supernaturalism, humans are already ghosts. We just happen to be haunting around for a while and these particular bodies, wet and smelly though they may be. So now time for the philosophical PSA. What to do if you find yourself in the middle of a fight between ghosts and zombies? Which admittedly is a silly question, unless you see it as a placeholder for the wider question about where philosophy is supposed to fit into the wider cultural wars between the arts and sciences. So what's a philosopher to do? Well first you might think, the job of the philosopher is to think hard and to find the right answer and then to sort of tell the rest of us. So the philosopher is a know-it-all. Secondly, you might think, well, although sober and thoughtful, the philosopher doesn't have any particular insights into the nature of the universe or the human mind, so their job is to referee the debate, make sure everybody's following the rules of rational discourse so nobody gets hurt. Philosopher is referee. <laughs> might say, well, well, wait a minute, why don't we step back and think outside of the box here? Maybe there's some third neglected alternative that nobody's thought of yet. And that, what the job of philosophy is to be the creative genius to identify the neglected alternative beyond the ghost and zombie dichotomy. Finally, it might occur to you at some point that you might look a little bit ridiculous trying to have a sober conversation with midnight revelers dressed up in costume. And besides, this debate doesn't really need to be settled right now anyway. Soon enough, everybody is going to go home and take off their costumes and sleep it off. And in the morning, nobody really believes in ghosts and zombies anymore. So it turns out the great debate between ghosts and zombies was no more than a bunch of midnight shadow boxing, punching and jabbing at positions that aren't really there. So that's it. It's Halloween. You're young. Have fun. Go out. Go to a party. Put on a costume. But beware. Take care that you're not frightened by your own shadow. Thank you.